You must be the Belmont. <laughs> I liked Castlevania. The animation was beautiful, the action creative and epic to watch. I liked the more subtle voice acting, and sometimes Call of Duty lobby dialogue and insults. I'm going to eat your soul, shit it out, and use it to smother your fucking girlfriend to death. The story was epic, and the characters were unique. It did, however, have its flaws. There were times the voices were too whispery and silent. Sometimes it felt like everyone was just doing impressions of everyone else. There was a lot of characters and characterization, but sometimes too much. And it pulled the focus away from the three main characters, which were the real heart of the show. The first two seasons were fantastic. The team dynamic between Trevor, Alucard, and Sypha was fun and interesting. Dracula was a complex and foreboding villain. And the rest of the minor cast added just enough character diversity and backstory to help prop up Dracula and the rest of the main characters. It would help highlight all the characteristics, flaws, and strengths. However, as the seasons went on, it started to feel bloated as they tried to flush out and add more to existing characters, as well as introduce new ones. The quality started to slip, and the stakes started to not feel as high since no one but the villains seemed to be in real danger. Death didn't seem as much of a consequence, and the three main characters were no longer the real focus of the story. Netflix also started to Netflix, and woke elements started to be introduced. But they never bothered me since it didn't seem to affect the story or take you out of the moment. They made it work in the world that was being built and had subtlety to it. Without going into more detail for the sake of time and potential of a different video talking about it. It is safe to say that even with all its flaws, I liked Castlevania all the way up to its end. But what about this new show, Castlevania Nocturne? How does it compare? Is it worth the watch? Now, it should be said that I'm a normie when it comes to Castlevania. I have never played the games, and my only knowledge about Castlevania and its universe comes from the original Netflix show. That being said, let's begin, and there will be plenty of spoilers, so you have been warned. Castlevania Nocturne is set around the times of the French Revolution and follows the events of Richter Belmont, Marie Renard, and Annette. The main vampire of the season, and from what it looks like the entire series, is Erzabet Athery, or however it's actually pronounced. She wants to plunge the world into eternal darkness so vampires can rule and feed at all times of the day. And then there's Ulrax, who's an Aztec vampire who killed Richter's mother when he was a kid in Boston. There are, of course, a number of other characters that are important to the story being played out, but again, for the sake of time, I won't be going over all of them or the entire plot of the season. The first thing to point out about the season is that it looks amazing. The animation is beautiful, and the fights were well executed. The animation and effects department are clearly putting in the effort, and the reward is some great visuals. It still looks and feels like the same universe. And it still sounds like the same universe. Once again, everyone is speaking the same types of voices in the same way as the original series. While I do still like the more subtle and grounded way to speak as opposed to the more overly emotional talk you might get in traditional anime, primarily compared to dubbed anime, it's still a little jarring when they all speak the exact same way. No one is more unique, talkative, bubbly, or even monotone than the other. This isn't a major criticism, but it is something that can get a little annoying sometimes. Once in a while, you want someone that has a little energy and not sound like they haven't slept in a week. Along with speaking the same way, Richter Belmont more or less acts the same as Trevor Belmont from the original series. He's characterized like if Trevor had Sypha's magic and... That isn't necessarily a bad thing, since he is directly related to them. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a fun character type. Sort of a magical code. It will have the name of the person he was trying to bring back from the dead. Oh, let me guess. 
It decodes as Vlad Dracula Tepesh. Why the fuck would anyone do that? Hmm? Huh? Would you do that? No, I wish I could fucking kill you twice! <laughs> I was going to say something witty and cutting and brutal before I finished you off. But fuck it. <laughs> And when done right, they can have a lot of depth to them as well. First episode does a good job setting him up, telling his backstory with his mom and Ulrochs and how and why he's in France. Also sets up his relationship with Maria and his relative skills and combat ability. Although, with how young he is, the age he lost his mother, you do wonder how he got so good at fighting when no one was really training him. In the original Castlevania, Trevor is a full-grown, seasoned man when you meet him. Even though he is the last Belmont, you believe he's still capable. In Nocturne, Richter keeps saying he is young and the last Belmont, although later in the season you learn he still has a grandfather. I couldn't help but wonder how he got so good at combat being mostly self-taught. It would have been a pretty easy change to still have Richter resent his grandfather for not being there when his mother died, but still have the grandfather be around and training him. It would have been an interesting dynamic between the two, a strained but dependent relationship. Regardless of that, I do still like Richter, and even though he is just a young, magic-filled Trevor Belmont. Belmont character isn't the only thing this new series shares with the original. It also has the bloat of characters the original had. Going through all of them and only describing them in one or two sentences or things that happen to them would take hours. There's just so many things that happen at one time, so many relationships developing and backstories being told. It isn't hard to follow, but so much happens per episode that the 25 minute runtime can feel like hours. It also makes it feel like Richter is not the main character. In eight episodes, only two episodes are really dedicated to learning about him and developing him. Which leads me to a major problem I have with the show. Richter was introduced in episode one, and it looks like the show was going to be heavily set around him and Maria. But as soon as Annette came into the picture, Richter was sidelined and became mostly the Annette and a generous portion of Maria show. Netflix pulled a Netflix. As soon as she was introduced, the woke element started creeping in. It was almost subtle at first with some of the decent reasoning for her to be there as a black woman in revolutionary France. But more and more with each episode, modern day politics and ideals started to creep in and the subtlety became less and less. There would be more diverse faces in the crowds of Commonwealth French people. And Nett would have flashbacks to when she was a slave, and there would be speeches about how slaves would never be free and equal, even in the future Americas and post-Revolution France. How their plight would be a never-ending battle. Her character became more about the fact that she's a freed slave, more than that was just an aspect of her character. She even has the magic power over rock and stone and metal, like a poetic, you can control your own chains kind of thing. She is the clever one and rarely defeated in battle. Most of her losses are due to somebody else. She isn't a terrible character, but she feels forced to be there. Like, the story didn't really need her. The importance she brings as a character and everything she does could have been done by Maria. Her overarching usefulness to the plot and some of her character traits could be good and interesting if they weren't sandwiched in between all the slavery stories that feels like it should have been in a separate Castlevania spin-off show. Orox feels the same way. Like him and Annette were just ripped out of a different story of a show being worked on and then put into here now with a French setting. Speaking of Orox, he is a gay Aztec vampire that once had a Mohican lover who... He turned into a vampire so he wouldn't lose him during the Revolutionary War. Then Richter's mom killed him. You get the feeling you're supposed to think of him as the sympathetic, misjudged villain that has a good point. It might be good in the end. He ends up in a relationship with Mizrak, who was more or less a Templar Knight of the village priest. 
So every time Mizrek talks about his love and devotion to God and all the noble religious ways, you can't take him seriously because they just keep showing him as just slept with a hell-spawn gay vampire. It completely undercuts what his character was supposed to be and how a character like him would actually think back in those times. Mizrek feels like he's trying to play two roles as a character, as the vehicle for Orlok to be able to confess his plans and feelings to, as well as leading him to be more involved with the good guys. And then he's also supposed to be the hold fast, no, you're not doing God's will and you lost your way voice to the abbot. This should have probably just been two separate characters, even though I think there are way too many already. But back to Ulrox. When he was first introduced, I took him as a vampire that happened to be Aztec. But then it became more, he's an Aztec man that happens to be a vampire. And giving his backstory about his dead lover, he keeps dropping lines about colonizers and land stealing that feels a bit of a leap and tying to his Mohican lover being killed. He also talks about people stealing land and killing for God and King, all these things that feel very Native American. Kind of Aztec, but more Native American. As an immortal vampire and Aztec man, you'd think he wouldn't really care about this. You'd think it's human nature. He has probably seen plenty of death, land theft and claims to power. Yeah, he probably did a lot of it himself. It all feels like it was thrown in there due to political ideals being talked about today, and no real thought was put into it. Main point here being that these woke ideals aren't as subtle and integrated into the story as they have been before. They can take the Watcher out of the scene or just make it drag on. Another noticeable difference with this series so far is the main vampire threat. Urzabet is not in most of the season. Her once needs and desires are mostly given by one-liners from other characters. She apparently sucked the blood of an Egyptian god, which now makes her think she is a god, and so she talks in the third person sometimes? There's not much to say to, about her because there's not much that was shown. She's very powerful and thinks she's god and blocks out the sun. Oh yeah, there are now lots of gods in this universe. Now, this doesn't bug me too much, but when you think Castlevania, you tend to think Belmonts, Dracula, traditional vampires. Dracula and most vampires are associated heavily with Christianity and the church. So now they're saying there's tons of gods while still using portals to hell, crosses as weapons, referencing demons, and making fun of the church altogether, and it just seems like an odd addition that didn't need to be there. Anyway, Urzabet is not as interesting as Dracula, or intimidating and clever as Carmilla, and it's hard to just go, look, she's powerful, ooh, when at the end of the original series, Trevor literally defeated and fought death. Overall, she just didn't really leave much of an impact on me. So, so far in Season 1, we have an exorbitant, bloated amount of characters. While still beautiful and action-packed, there's a bunch of woke elements put in, and then a kind of just forgettable villain that I don't feel much urgency and fear or anything about. So, to conclude... Castlevania Nocturne seems to inherit all the things I didn't really like about the later seasons of the original Castlevania and dialed it up a notch. There's still something to enjoy about it, but you might get just as much joy from those few moments as a clip or a meme. Netflix is just doing what Netflix does to ruin shows. And the reviews and audience scores seem to reflect that. I seem to agree with this general audience reception. The show is average at best, and you can probably give it a skip. Or not. Go ahead, and if you want, if you liked the original one, watch this one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And with that, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you thought, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.